Hello again, YouTube. Hope everybody's doing well. So we are starting our series this week. Um, it is going to be probably a 10-part series on how to become a better crappie angler. So if you guys are looking to get into crappie fishing or you've been crappie fishing for 10 or 15, 20 years, you're going to learn something from this series because we're going to start at the beginning and we're going to work our way all the way to the end. So if you haven't subscribed yet, guys, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because you're not going to want to miss the next 10 episodes. Hit that little notification bell. That way you get notified when the not or when the new videos come out and you guys can keep up with this series because it's going to be really good. A lot of good stuff. Looking forward to it. Today, we're going to start with equipment. The necessary equipment to become a successful crappie angler on the water. What is the starter pack for the necessary equipment to start off on the right foot to becoming a better crappie angler? So stick with us, we'll be right back. I appreciate you guys for being here. And don't forget, hit that subscribe button so you get a notification when the next one comes out. All right guys, we'll be right back with you. All right, guys, welcome back. So again, we are going to keep it in the shop for episode one, and we are going to talk about equipment. The basics, the basic equipment you need to become a better crappie angler, a more well-rounded crappie angler, okay? So this is gonna go for not only in the boat, but also from the bank. What do you need to become a well-rounded crappie angler? Well, let's talk a little bit about the necessities of what we need. So let's start out with equipment first, and we're gonna start out with our rod and reel, because you gotta have a fishing rod to go catch fish, right? So my rod of choice is an ACC crappie stick. I love their six, this is a six and a half foot ACC crappie stick, okay? I love the six and a half footer because it does everything for me. It, I can cast, I can pitch, I can shoot docks, I can vertical jig, I can do anything with this rod and it's not cumbersome to me, okay? It's not too long, It's I, I do have those long rods, guys, don't get me wrong. I have those 10, 12 foot rods, I have that 13 foot rear seat, I have those rods, but I don't use them very often because I can do everything I need to do with this rod. Put this six and a half in my hand and I can do it all, okay? So it's very versatile. Great backbone, great feel, ton of sensitivity. It's just a good, well-rounded rod for the starting crappie angler, okay? It just is a good starter rod, okay? You don't have to worry about it getting hung up in a tree. You don't have to worry about it, you know, breaking a rod tip off on the dock when you set the hook. You know, you just, it's just a good, well-rounded rod for the crappie angler, okay? Fluger try-on, size 25 reel, okay, guys? That is a Fluger try-on. I do love, again, that's a size 25. I don't know if you guys can see it down there, but that is the size 25, okay? Line, I prefer 12 pound bonehead tackle braid, okay? Now, there is a jig head on here. That is a 16th ounce jig head. That is a uh, bonehead tackle stump bug. But let's talk a little bit about baits, okay? What do you need as a beginning crappie angler when you're starting out? Let's say you don't know any of this. You're just trying to start out. You don't know braided, line, mono. You know, you're just trying to get started in crappie fishing, okay? So as a crappie angler, you gotta have high-vis line, okay? This is vicious, four-pound test. This is what I shoot docks with. This is my go-to line. It's mono, okay, high-vis. My go-to line is a vicious four-pound test, okay, guys? That's what I that's what I started crappie fishing with right there. You can buy it. It's like seven, eight bucks a spool. It's absolutely awesome mono. Love it, love it, love it. Great, great uh, line. So, and then again, there's my orange B Power bonehead tackle braid. Okay, guys, that is the bonehead tackle braid that I currently use to fish 
open water fish, to fish structure. I shoot docks with it some, but I still like shooting docks with my mono. Comes off the spool a little bit better, and it just, to me, that high vis, you can see it a lot better when you're shooting docks. It jumps a lot better when fish hit that bait on the fall under a dock. You get that line jump. It gets a, you just get a lot more out of mono when you're shooting docks, personally, I feel. Okay. So baits, let's talk about baits. If you're the crappie angler and you're starting out, and you'll say, you know, I want to go catch crappie. I want to, I want to go try to target crappie. Okay. There's two different kinds of baits. All right. There's action tail, an action tail bait, and a straight tail bait. Okay. So what I would not consider action tail, I consider it a straight tail, more of a sleek, slender profile. There's several different types of baits on the market, guys. All good baits. My go-to is the bonehead tackle baits, okay? Bonehead tackles, stump bugs, and slim sticks. But they're not action tail bait, okay? They're more of your of your straight tail bait. There's uh, the bonehead tackle. That's uh, slick, okay, right there. That's the slick color. That is the um, bonehead tackle slim stick, okay? So it's like a minnow type bait. Let's get one out for you so you can see those. So it's got that kind of that minnow tail that doesn't want to stop bouncing, okay, guys? So that's your minnow bait. And then here's kind of your cross between, you know, what I would consider a beaver tail. So you got the kind of the split tail legs, if you will. And you got the beaver tail in the middle. That is my go-to bait for crappie fishing is the slim stick. And, a lot, and I use that black and chartreuse a ton. So <clears throat> now that is what I consider your, not your non-action tail, your straight tail baits. Um, they're a little, like I said, they don't create as much action. You're not going to get those, those lethargic fish to, to chase an action tail bait, you know, in the middle of winter or the middle of summer, something with a little sleeker profile. And those baits catch fish year round, no doubt. Crappie love that straight tail bait. They always have. Okay. But at times when crappie are feeding, like in the fall, spring, those fish are on that feed pattern. They want an action tail bait, okay guys? Now, action tail baits that I like to use, that is the Charlie Brewer slider, okay? I love the Charlie Brewer slider. It's a paddle tail bait, okay guys? So it's got a little paddle tail on it. These baits are an inch and a half. They're a little smaller, okay? So they're not as long, and they've got this great little paddle tail on the end of them. Can you guys see that paddle tail? See if I can get it a little. See that paddle? So you got that paddle tail on the end of that jig, okay? And it swims. It's an action tail bait, okay? Love Charlie Brewer sliders. Used them for years. They're great trolling bait. They troll very well and they cast very well. You can swim them through a brush pile. They swim through a brush pile great and they catch a ton of fish, guys. So the next thing that I would have is a curly tail, okay? Curly tails have been around since the beginning, all right? People have been catching crappie on a curly tail jig since crappie were discovered way back in the day. <laughs> I mean, these things have literally been around forever, and they catch fish, okay? These are Southern Pro Hot Grubs. Everybody knows the Southern Pro Hot Grub, okay? All the crappie guys go, yep, know those. Southern Pro makes a great curly tail. Mr. Twister makes a good curly tail. There are a lot of good curly tail jigs out there on the market, guys, but... I love a Southern Pro Hot Grub. I'm, I'm a sucker for a Southern Pro Hot Grub. Always have been, great baits, okay? So again, action tail, non-action tail, those are your two crappie baits. They're great baits, both of them really, really great baits, work very well, okay? Now, let's talk, um, let's talk jig heads, all right? You don't have to have fancy jig heads, guys. You don't have to, and the number one question I get about a jig head is, do unpainted jig heads catch fish, all right? Well, listen, silver is a color, all right? And that's silver, okay? Unpainted jig heads, I use unpainted jig heads a ton, all the time. I always have unpainted tied on, always. Even in a tournament situation, I'm rocking unpainted jig heads. Now, if you look in my box here, I do have painted jig heads as well, okay, guys? I've got painted, I've got unpainted. Everybody can see that. I love chartreuse. Most of my jig heads are chartreuse, if you can tell over here. A lot of chartreuse, okay? But I do have orange, pink, red, white, yellow. Um, I've got the different color jig heads as well. 
because you never know. You know, you might switch over to a pink jig head and they start biting. You may switch over to a white jig head, they start biting. That little bit of color difference, that little bit of contrast, it's not necessarily color, it's more contrasting the water, but you make that switch to a different colored jig head and you may start getting a few more bites. So having a good selection of jig heads in different weights is a good idea. You need 30 seconds, you need 16 and you need eighths. As a starting crappie angler, those are the three that you need the most. Six or a 30 second, a 16th, and an eighth ounce jig head, and you're good to go. Okay. I like a number two hook because on a two inch bait or anything between a one and a three inch bait, a number two hook works great. Seems to fit that profile, fit that bait very well. So number two hooks, 32nd, 16th, and an eighth ounce jig head, okay? Um, so that talks about rods, that talks about baits, and that talks about line, and that talks about jig heads. Now, that's kind of your go-to every day, ready to rock and roll, bank fishing, gotta go see if we can catch a few, okay? Now let's talk about, let's get a little bit more onto the boat side of it. And let's talk about some of the necessities you should have on your boat to start out crappie fishing, okay? Electronics. You don't necessarily need the best electronics. Guys, these are Lowrance HDS Gen 1s. These came out, this was the first generation Lowrances, okay? I have a 10 here and I have an eight right here. I run my side imaging on my 10. I run my down imaging and my mapping on my eight, okay? I do not run standard sonar anymore. I don't have a need for standard sonar anymore because down imaging and side imaging, I can see everything I need to see. Now, with that being said, I know you guys aren't necessarily gonna go out and run two units. One unit's fine. A seven, a nine. If I was going to look for an economical, cost-effective unit, okay? And for you guys that know me, I own Wired Marine Electronics. We have a Facebook page. You can check that out. I do electronics installs. If I was gonna look for an economical starter unit to throw on a boat and go crappie fishing, it would be a Garmin unit, guys. I would run a Garmin 73 or 93 SV, something that's got side imaging, something that's got down imaging, something that's got GPS capabilities because you need to be able to mark your brush piles when you find them. You need to try you don't have to spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to be a crappie fisherman. You just need something to find brush. You can do that pretty economically with Garmin units and you don't have to break the bank, okay? So I would say the next thing after locating that brush pile, the next most important thing in your boat is this little jewel right here, okay? These little puppies, and I prefer the H shape, okay, buoy. These are buoys. This is a marker buoy for those that don't know. Um, this little weight unfolds. You throw it in the lake, it spins, the weight goes down, and it floats on top of the lake and marks your brush pile. So when you find a brush pile on your, on your unit, okay, you go over that brush pile. As soon as that brush pile starts to come on the screen, this needs to be thrown out the back of your boat right over top of your transducer. That will mark your brush pile. Next question I get, if you throw a brush pile on, or if you throw a buoy, excuse me, on a brush pile, does it spook the fish? I can tell you, no, it doesn't. They may move a little bit, but they come right back. And I've seen that time and time and time and time and time and time and time again because of live scope. I have thrown buoys out with my live scope spin down and watched them go down through a brush pile. And they do sometimes, I mean, if this goes, gets ready to hit a fish, he's gonna move, but they come right back. So. To answer that question, no, it, I don't believe it spooks fish off a of brush pile. Now, if that's coming down towards your head, you're gonna move out of the way too, but they do not spook. So that is one of the most important tools. And throwing these out is a science, okay? For those of you that do not have forward-facing sonar, these are your best friend, why? Because when you're on the lake and you throw this buoy out, it is a constant identifier of where you're casting your jig. So you can go anywhere around this buoy 
with your boat, okay? You can go anywhere around this buoy and you know that, hey, every time I cast three feet to the right of my buoy, I catch a fish. So you know those that brush pile is somewhere to the right of your buoy. Or every time I cast five feet left of my buoy, I catch a fish. So you know those fish are setting five feet left of your buoy. So it's very important to have some kind of point of reference in the lake if you don't have forward-facing sonar that you can be repetitive to. It's not always about locating the, the mega school of fish. If you can locate fish and you can put that bait consistently and be repetitive to casting to that brush pile or that little school of fish that's on that brush pile, let's say the brush is here or the buoy's here and you're casting here, 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 and every time you cast there, you get a bite, it's easy to be repetitive, okay? It's easy to continue to throw that jig on the fish. So very, 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 very important tool. That is probably numero uno for me if I'm in a boat and don't have forward-facing sonar. That is numero uno. This is the way that I personally used to fish. I always fished offshore. I always fished structure out in the main lake. And this and these are how I did that, okay? Locate that brush pile, drive right over top of that brush pile, throw this buoy out right on that brush pile, and then repetitively cast. Now, when you get up there and this buoy, buoy's in the lake, you may have to cast here. Nope, no bite. Cast here. Nope, no bite. Cast short of it. No, no bite. And then you may have to move around a little bit. You come over here and you cast this side of it, you know, and then you cast this side of it. So you're moving around trying to find those fish, but once you get that first bite, once you fan cast this way, this way, boom, you get a bite right there. You're locked on. You know it's here. You know to throw there, and you can repetitively catch fish, okay? It's a very, very important tool if you're going to be a beginning crappie fisherman. So I hope that helps you guys. That is my quick rundown of what you need to start your starter kit, if you will, to becoming a great crappie fisherman. Um, so you guys make sure, again, you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. That way you get those notifications when we post another video. So looking forward to the series. Don't forget, guys, leave a comment before you go, and we'll catch you on the next one.